Hey guys, welcome to the Quick Talk Podcast, the only show handcrafted for small business entrepreneurs looking to explode with their business. It's time to get your mind right so you can get your grind right. Are you ready? owns Ikea is the fifth wealthiest man in the world and he still flies economy and drives drives a Volvo you know you don't have to draw big bucks because because that means that you've made it you know but what you want to do is make sure that the business that you build makes it thank you everybody for joining me this is Josh Latimer coming to you from Costa Rica and I am here today as you all know to share you no fluff straight to the point business insights from super interesting people from all over the world. Now, today is a special show, at least for me, because I get to talk to my friend Perry Tate. Perry's one of those guys that you you can't get a hold of because he's traveling the world, doing crazy stuff all over the place. Originally, I think, from Australia. He lives in China now. He's the CEO and founder of Future of Cleaning, and he's well, well known in the window cleaning space because you almost can't be in this business and not know who Perry is. But for those of you who don't, uh, he's built a multi-million dollar business from almost nothing after moving continents to China. I can't wait to talk to him to get inside his head because he's not just a big personality. He's got a lot of really smart business sense he's going to share with us. Perry, how how are you doing in China? I'm so grateful that you're here with me today. Mate, I'm sensational. It's a it's actually a fascinating place to live. It's uh it's probably more American than America if you think about you know, the Starbucks and KFC and McDonald's and thank God it's Friday. And, you know, Walmart was here for a good bit and Best Buys, but they came and went. But yeah, it's, it's, and, and like we've got trains that travel at 200 miles an hour in between every city. Wow. You know, it's a fascinating place. Fascinating. And so, and clean, super clean, no graffiti. Everybody's tidy. You don't see, you don't see a lot of poverty in the cities. Obviously there is huge, there's a billion people in poverty in the, in the countryside. Well, that's one of the things I noticed about Costa Rica was that it's very westernized in a lot of ways, especially in the city. And, you yep. know, you wouldn't think of that. You just kind of think of an ox cart down a dirt road full of vegetables yeah. or something. But these <laughs> people it. know what they're doing. They're on Facebook. They're living their life. And they're plugged into the grid kind of like everybody. So that's it's cool, though. I, I love just the idea of an elastic economy, you know, this global workforce. I, I don't know about your company, but... I have a graphic designer in Ireland. I have another one in Minnesota. I have a guy working with me closely on some technology stuff from Arkansas. My development team's from Michigan. <laughs> and and, and yeah. that's normal now. How weird is that? Is that all with Upworks, like Elan, the old Elans? Well, I've used those in the past. None of those particular people are through that particular channel. Okay. But those businesses are good because yeah. they're they're connecting you with competent professionals and you know, I don't want to get too far in the weeds because we're really talking to cleaners today, but there's so much <laughs> opportunity. There is. There's so much opportunity everywhere. And be, to dive into it first, Perry, I, I want to get some more backstory about you, if you could, maybe a little bit about your upbringing, how you got to where you are. I know you've been in the cleaning business in Australia for a time, and, and but now you're in China. You moved there as a single dad. You built this gigantic, ginormous seven-figure business. It's a super niche industry. How the heck did that happen? Can you unpack that a little bit? Unpack it. It's a, it's a big package, isn't it? Hey, um, I'll tell you what. Um, I think, you know, from a personality point of view, then I've always been, you know, sort of uh, prepared to take risk. And I've always been a salesperson. I've studied sales, you know, my whole life. So, you know, I'd fe- I feel I'm a professional salesman. And that's my, that's my core passion is, you know, sales and marketing and sales marketing. So, um what happened was I ended up uh, being a single dad. Uh, I think if we go back to maybe the year 2000, 2001, I had a couple of kids that came and lived with me. And then, uh, and then I needed to um, be in a position where I could um, support them. And uh, I had a, a super partner at the time, but that's sort of by the by because um, getting kids and keeping um, partners who don't have kids with you is another story. And um, so I ended up uh, selling franchises for VIP Home Services, which are cleaning franchises. And uh, and so 
a couple of years into doing that, um, somebody came along to me and said, hey, I've seen these uh, waterfed poles in the UK and they're really interesting and, you know, could we get involved? And, you know, we didn't even sell a window cleaning franchise at that time. It was all just home cleaning and they sort of took the window cleaning leads as they came in. And so um, I ended up going to the UK, meeting with Craig Morlam, who's really the founder of the pure water technology in the world, and uh, spending a week with Craig and Ruben in Ionics. And I did the British Window Cleaning Academy course in January 2006 with Craig. And he kind of opened my eyes massively, you know, to the potential of the industry. So it kind of went all the way back then. And then I set up, um, we went to a trade show and we spent about 30 grand setting up this amazing stand and had a scissor lift with the, with the door up, you know, 35, 40 feet in the air as high as we could get it and poles and a pure water system that we'd developed and all that. And uh, we got all these inquiries and everybody was fascinated and it was a great display, but nobody wanted to buy it. But what happened is that a whole lot of people came to me and said, hey, you know, we don't really think that'll work, but if you want to clean our windows, you know, we'll let you, we'll let you go out and do it. So we ended up, you know, not being in the supply business and being in the window cleaning business with, with the stock that we had and, um, and the system that we designed, we had to become our own customer. Yeah. I mean, that's a pivot right there, right? I mean, yeah. you started in one path and kind of for survival purposes, <laughs> kind of swung and actually, so you actually tried to start in the manufacturing equipment business, switched back into the service business, right? Yeah. And we're, we imported some poles, um, the x poles that was arranged back then. They were fiberglass and hybrid. So we imported them, but nobody would buy them. So we had them sort of mothballed. Um, we'd paid a deposit on them, actually. And um, so they held them for us. And then uh, and then 2009, Ionix came to Australia, and then they started to get a bit of traction. So we, we had, uh, oh, it was about 250 poles of different lengths sitting around. And uh, so we sort of got back into selling, and in, in six months, we'd sold all of them. And uh, then I realized it was sort of game on, but the design was wrong. So it kind of frustrated me um, that uh, that these fixed links poles with internal tubes. And I think the point that really started reach it um, was if you had a 30 foot pole and you wanted to get a 40 foot pole, you'd have to buy another 40 feet instead of just 10. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So if somebody had a one, two, three, four and five story pole, that would be one into a, a six, 10. That's 15 stories worth of poles, right. but they only want to reach five stories. <laughs> exactly. And I thought, oh my God, there's something just so wrong with this. Well, I can speak from personal experience on that, actually. I got into the waterfed pole game in my personal business really early. Like I jumped on it as soon as it was available and I paid like 2,500 bucks for like one pole. Like it was so expensive in the beginning. Yeah. And But I made that investment and it was well worth it, by the way. But yeah, you're right. You, there was there's no flexibility back then, and you've kind of changed that now. Yeah, that's what we did. But we actually most people don't know that we got out of out of the business um, when when we first came to China. We actually came. I came with another opportunity to sell uh, um, heat exchange like systems, like solar and uh, hot water systems for five star hotels and hospitals. I'd been working on that part time as well as with my kid <laughs> and. Uh, and the window cleaning business and selling franchises. So, um, so I came with him, but he was like an Aussie Chinese guy. And then uh, we got our first big sale uh, about nearly a year after I moved here, or maybe maybe nine months. And uh, and uh, it was a big five star hospital in uh, in Shuguang in Shandong province. And uh, so anyway, it came time for me to get my commission, and he he made the decision that he wasn't going to pay me. So then I was kind of left high and dry. I'd kind of burnt two years on this project and a year of just draining every cent we had and, uh, and we're kind of strapped completely. And I had a baby on the way. That's another one. Oh my <laughs> word. Wow. So I went back to Australia and sold my tool shed and, uh, and my last car, like I had a, a 19, I don't know, it was 1995 old four wheel drive that we used to use on the holidays and stuff. And brought back to China ten thousand dollars, and I had my son with me. He was like seventeen at the time, and so he'd already left school and all that. So I said, "Come on, let's go and start a business together." So, um, so unbelievable. I did. mean, there's a lot. There's a lot that you just laid out there. But one <laughs> thing, the two things I'm taking notes. One, I wrote down the word risk, and then I also wrote down the word why do people feel bad for being salespeople? Because in the very beginning, you said you consider yourself a professional salesperson, and and this conversation from here forward it doesn't have to be about specifically window cleaning for right, a while. I right, want to right. dive into business in general. And yep. people are terrified to take intelligent risk. 
and they're terrified to be a sales guy. Why do people feel bad for just being excited about the stuff they sell? Why are we so passive? And how big of an effect can it have on our business if we change that thinking, Peter? Um, my personal belief on that, because I have thought at, at, at great length about that, because obviously when I tell people I'm a salesman, I get treated with the stigma of that. And, um, and I kind of beat my chest and I'm quite proud that I understand. I think I understand it. And I think it's whether you know yourself so if you trust yourself, then you're trustworthy and you're solid. And I think that um, I'm, I'm highly trained. I've done, you know, three times the Tom Hopkins boot camp and all the Zig Ziglar stuff and, you know, all the stuff from, from, from the guys who really pushed out sales technique. And I ultimately concluded that the difference between a professional salesman and a con man is not the technique. It's his own integrity. That makes a lot of sense. And why do, why do service businesses, it's almost like, Sometimes they feel bad for trying to sell that thousand dollar package to that homeowner or they feel guilty for being successful for some reason and rather than looking at it as them serving the client. Because if you sell a water fed pole to someone, Perry, and you're rah rah and you're and you're excited about it, you're helping them. I mean, you're meeting a need, you're scratching an itch. And that's really what all integrity filled businesses are doing is we're meeting the needs of our customers. And we don't need to feel bad to sell the stuff that we have. But maybe they've never put themselves in their customers' shoe to really be able to articulate what it is that they are doing it for, doing for them. Like, for example, you know, I would like to clean your windows because, you know, you go to work and do what you love doing. Hopefully you love your job, right? And you make enough money to bring home some money that you pay me to do the things you don't want to do. You know, mm -hmm. I really like that. I didn't say it as beautifully as I can, but it's that basic pitch is to say, you know, I'm here to give you your weekends back. Yes. I'm here to stop you climbing on your roof and taking the risk of killing yourself or being injured. That's what I'm here for, you know? Yep. So, so you give me that money and, and, and then you know what I do? I give some of that money to somebody else to do stuff that I don't like doing. I hate mowing my lawn. So I got a lawn mowing guy, you know? Yeah. So That's once you point. get that, what you're doing is, is helping somebody else. You're not just jagging them, you know, because you, you clean their windows, you're actually giving them, clarity you're giving them their view which they paid for you know when they bought their property or whatever it is or a sense of cleanliness and hygiene for the for the mom who's you know at home all the time you know there's Absolutely. so many things that you're giving to that person and when you believe in that and you know that you're in, you know yourself that you're completely um you, know, you have a sense of integrity about you know what you're doing and how you use your money and you know what i mean then you're part of the community and that's your that's your function Absolutely. Then you and should it, then you should be able to sell with conviction and upsell. Like upselling is everything, by the way. Like that's certainly since Groupons and stuff like that. I mean, you know, upselling is 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 what it's all about. The the initial price is often, you know, quite low in the service industry to, to be able to win the if to win your way in front of the people, you know. Mm-hmm. Yep. There's a lot of good in what you said. And if we view ourselves as providing a service to scratch an itch. That's an analogy I like to use a lot, but really it's an emotional connection. This can sound cheesy, but if you think about it, it's absolutely true. When you clean someone's carpets or you clean their windows, you literally create an emotional trigger in people. They feel happy and good. They feel relieved because they couldn't even do that themselves. And, you, and you're providing that service. And for an attorney who makes $200 an hour, he's not going to come home and spend 12 hours trying to clean his own stuff when you can do it in two hours for 100 bucks, right? So the point is, is we need to be confident in what we're doing yeah. and, and feel good about what we're doing as long as we really are doing right by people. Yeah, that's it. And the yeah. value, the beauty is in the eyes of the holder. The value is in the eyes of the customer, you know? Like one yeah. of the things I, I had a friend who was doing the, the Google AdWords for, for a carpet cleaning chain in Australia. And what he worked out was uh, that basically words like quality and experience and professional worked in the AB demographics, you know, the, the higher, higher paid demographic areas. And then words like, you know, cheap and fast and, you know, good kind of, you know, words like that worked in the lower, the CD demographics. So, you know, the other one is to try and understand that, you know, where the customer's at and what's important to them and then, you know, have an offer for them, which meets what where they're at, you know, as you get to understand them. Well, let's talk about risk for a minute, because 
I know buying equipment is risky. I took my business period. You, you, I don't think you know my background, but I started a company with really nothing. I mean, I had a ladder strapped to the roof of a Chevy Cavalier, which is this tiny <laughs> little crappy car, right? right? And, you know, through trial and error and through being mentored by people that cared about me and through, you know, learning from, from people who have done it before me, we I grew a really nice sized business. And one of the things I learned early on was that investing in my education, investing in equipment, investing in systems is super critical, but it hurts when you do it. Like there's pain involved. I remember when I bought my first waterfed pole, it 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 was like a, that knot in your stomach kind of feeling. How, how do people understand if they're making a good buy on something, not just waterfed poles, but in general, how do we take that risk to prop ourselves up to be able to go to that next level in our business? How do we, how do we know what's right? Oh, it's a, it's a huge question, isn't it? I think that the, I mean, the, the, the real answer sits in ROI, like the term return on investment. You know, that's, that's where the, the real answer is. So you've got to be able to think about, you know, how that, how that thing's going to work for you. And, uh, and uh, you know, I'm very passionate about the 80-20 rule. There's some, there's some great material out there that, you know, the 80-20 rule is really the founding rule of all business. You know, you make all of your decisions based around, you know, what, what matches 80% of the work that you're doing. So if you can find a tool that'll leverage 80% of your work and then you've got to deal with the 20%, then that 20% should be dealt with as an exception so that you're going to get return on investment on your 80%, on, you know, because you're going to use it 80% of the time. And that's one of those bugbears that I always had was waterfed poles when they're a, a six-story waterfed pole, you know, somebody could pay two and a half grand for it, whatever we did back then, you know. Mm -hmm. and But it was only a six-story pole, but only one-sixth of that building is six stories. You know, one sixth of it you can reach without a pole at all. Like it's ground level. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So yeah. being able to understand that what what eighty percent of your carpets are, what eighty percent of your windows are, what eighty percent of the surfaces that you clean are, and then buy your equipment to match that. And then if you're lucky, you'll have a product that'll be able to be um, that'll be able to be adjusted to 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 cater for the twenty percent. You know, that's that's how we've designed the reach at poles, but. But it may not always apply to carpet cleaning or other things. You might need to go down to, to a higher place and hire the equipment that'll do that 20% of work that's not, not your core business. Right. Well, that makes a lot of sense. And this plays into a good – one of the things I teach in my business systems courses, Perry, is you need to build business systems around the, the general rule, not the exception. Mm. People get hung up on the, on the, well, but what if this happens? Well, who cares if that happens? Or what, what about on the second Tuesday of the month if, if I have oh, this scenario? Who gives a crap about the second Tuesday of the month? Exactly. Like, every, like we, get it, we get it with the polls. Every guy wants the longest poll. You know? Well, that's kind <laughs> of, kind of <laughs> metaphoric. Is that a coincidence? <laughs> as long as you get told you've got the longest poll, you're fine. But... Oh, that's funny. <laughs> But uh, it's kind of it's kind of funny that you know we just see that, and I just I've got so many guys online who just always thank me and said Perry's always you know talked me out of buying a pro and talked me out of buying this and talked me into buying a mini and all that because it's the right one. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. We, we <laughs> small business owners have one of two extremes: they either do nothing, they're super cheap skates, and then they complain why their business sucks and they don't have any sales or revenue because they won't spend a penny on anything. Or they go maybe to the other extreme where they don't even have a customer yet and they cash out their 401k and buy a truck mount exactly. and buy a $50,000 carpet cleaning <laughs> machine or something. And leave no money for marketing. Right, yeah. right, right, right. So, I mean, gosh, there's so many things that you can screw up. But I can tell you this, and you probably agree. If you just don't quit and you stick with it, I mean, you don't have to be perfect at this stuff to succeed, but people kind of quit the band before it gets a record deal sometimes. They don't stick with their business long enough to come out the other side and really have that success. Sure, and I think that there's a, there's a key part of that, and that's to make sure that your overheads are as low as possible for as long as possible. I think that's 100% you know, what makes or breaks a business. People are better to keep their full-time job and you know, you know, in, in in the states, there's a lot of guys who are window cleaners who are um, who are firemen, you know, or were firemen, and uh, and that makes just complete sense. Keep that fire job, you know, fireman job for as long as possible, and build the business up to the point that it can that you don't have to draw from it, so you can reinvest your money into it, get it up to a critical mass of money and turnover that you can draw from it what you need, but for as long as possible, draw as little little as possible from it, and and work it from home and use a secondhand vehicle and you know put a bit of a wrap on it so it looks prettier than what it actually does or whatever but just keep everything no leases 
no no commitments into the future with the money that you that you know you're going to earn yep. <laughs> that you may not yeah absolutely people people sometimes get too caught up with their ego rather than what makes logical sense and they want to have this fleet we only bought used vehicles i mean if i spent more more i think out of my entire history in my company we ran like eight different crews at the end and i right. think our most expensive truck that i bought um, was like 12 grand and that was like a nice truck like we usually we, we didn't spend yeah. nothing on it i didn't care about that we cared about top line no. growth making more sales building systems investing in our employees making people feel loved our customers and our staff and that's what the yep. key to success was and so risk is important but you have to balance that with your brain so maybe we should say intelligent risk is important <laughs> Listen up. Now remember, being self-employed is not the same as being a business owner. And if you are looking for a way to automate your business and build yourself a clear path to the dream that keeps eluding you, then check out my online small business boot camp. It's a go at your own pace. It's power packed. It's a mind bomb. It will help you understand exactly how to architecture out and systematize your small business right now so you can finally be back in control. Go to windowwealth.com right now and check it out. Use the code MINDBOMB to save 30%. It's time to invest in yourself. You know, what's the, 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 the qualifying statement on risk is to expect the unexpected. You know, it's what you don't know you don't know which will come and get you. You know, so, so you know, you can never be, what do they say, be, be humble and gracious in victory and defeat. You know, you've really got to, You've really got to stay pretty, pretty grounded through risk because at any time something could come out of left field, and uh, you know if you go whale watching, sometimes the whale can can roll the boat. You know. Yeah, I, I've experienced that <laughs> firsthand. That's a really good analogy. Pride comes before yeah. a fall, right? Yes, yes. To, to quite a famous book. I want to I want to talk about something specific, Perry. Two years ago at the pressure washing convention. Now, for those of you who are listening. Perry is like pretty low key right now. When this guy gets on stage, I saw 700 grown men stand up on their feet, raise their <laughs> hands above their head, and and just completely he he can he just you have this crazy energy that is really birthed in your authenticity. Like it comes because you're authentic, people know you're authentic, yeah. and you're fun to listen to when you speak. Well, I didn't make it to this year's convention, but I saw the videos and stuff. But 2 years ago, I was seriously blown away by a, a speech that you gave called, I think it was called Ideas. And I literally remember it to this day. And I'm not trying to give you like false like like praise, but it literally was incredible. Could you like unpack that? Because for any entrepreneur listening, guys, I promise you this, just this concept, this, pro, I don't know what to call it. Perry's talk he gave two years ago on the ideas is something we all need to hear about. Can we dig into that a little sure, bit? Sure, sure. No, I'm, I'm passionate about it. Um, and, uh, you know, we've, we're going to turn it into a product for sure. Cause we've been, we've been testing it. We use it in our business all the time. And I'm pretty sure that it's a, that it's a major contributor, um, for how I work with my son. Cause he does all of our graphics and media and everything like that. So he's got to translate, you know, what, what's happening in my mind and what I'm saying. And he's got to translate it in a way that people can read it and see it and things like that. So we have a, we pretty much fight, you know, every second day, if not every day, you know, in the business. And that's another thing I really believe in conflict, right? Conflict is essential Two people achieve, you know, seeking the same result from a different direction must have conflict. And if you're scared of conflict, then you're really, you're really, you're, you're really not, um, you're just not cutting edge. You know what I mean? Like you're, you're yeah, stepping well, you've back. You've heard the, have you, have you heard the quote that if, two business partners agree on everything one of them's unnecessary <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah conflict isn't isn't bad you know you, if, if you've got two people that are passionate about something that's what create produces greatness yep. is that rub yep. that friction so here it goes here's here's how ideas works it's a it's a an acronym i think that's what you call it isn't it i-d-e-a-s yeah um mm -hmm. I, I stands for inspiration and inspiration is um just a a sudden mental burst of energy that is just incredible. You know, you go, wow. Like, you know, when they say, sometimes they might call it a penny drop or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or an aha moment. An aha. Yeah. That's another one. Yep. So, but, it, but aha doesn't have it, does it? <laughs> aha doesn't have that, that explosion of, oh my God, that's it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yes. so I really, I really think it's more than aha. <laughs> and, um, okay. 
And so inspiration is, um, it's the source of innovation. It's the, it's the thing that nobody had ever thought of before and, uh, or that you knew of, right? You, sometimes you get an inspiration and you find out somebody else is well down the path, but, but um, you never had exposure to it before. And then the D is for design. The definition of design is when you bring something that never existed before into existence. So design is not copy. Design without inspiration, design without innovation is copy. Yeah. So if you see what somebody else is doing, let's say you've got a marketing plan, you see somebody else's marketing plan, you copy their marketing plan. That's not, you haven't innovated it and you haven't designed it. Even if you change the flyer, you know what I mean? There's, des- right. there's design in it. You can say desktop publishing, design, you know what I mean? There's a, but that's not the meaning of D, design and ideas. The right, that makes a lot of sense, yeah. D for design means it did not exist, right? Right, I mean, that's that's when you get really big market-disrupting ideas yeah, and category huge busters. game-changing things. Yeah, yes. it's, it's uh, it, you change, the, you know, when they say game-changer, that means somebody designed something, yeah? So it's really important to understand that design is really revolutionary where you're, 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 you're able to... Um, sort of work on this this mental explosion, this mental spark, this mental um, uh, epiphany. You know, something happened to you where you go, "I've got it!" Like this is how my business is going to work, or this is this is this is what I'm not doing, or uh, you know, look at the, right. look at this inefficiency. If I could do this, like how much faster I'd be. Yeah, like that. To be to be clear too. To be clear, design doesn't have to do with you know a physical product like this. This could be the architecture of your business itself, the way that you engage customers. Anything that sets you apart is unique, fresh, brand new, and from your own brain. Correct. Is that what you mean? Yep. And 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 the and the defining point is it did not exist, and then it does. That means you've designed it, right? It's not it's not executed yet, but it's but it means that that you're bringing something into existence. Yeah. So then execute is E. E for execute and execute is pretty easy, but most people um, get design and execute mixed up and, and so will you. And so will I, you know, because sometimes you, you're not, you're kind of mixing the two of them together, but execute is the person or the hat that you're wearing when you're saying, how am I going to do this? Yeah. So that's the, yes. that's the, the basic element. Well, we should actually put a pin in this E for a minute because execution is the number one reason. People don't grow their business. They don't automate their business. It's the reason they stay trapped in their business. It's the problem for so many things, not just business, relationships. Like we talk a lot. We learn a lot. Yeah. We're perpetual podcast listeners, Perry. Uh, we, we read consumers. every blog. We go to every yeah. forum. <laughs> we, we consume only. We never Create. execute. We don't, we don't make it happen into the world. Yep. And, and oh, can I just take two seconds? I want Go. to tell you something that drives me crazy. So I'm walking in a store with a friend of mine, and we see this product for sale. And the product's for sale, and my friend of mine says, oh, I thought of that 20 years ago. And I looked at him, and I had this epiphany because my friend in his brain actually thinks that he's on the same level as the guy who has that product in existence in the store. And this is a huge mistake people make, right? He's like, oh, I thought of that. That's the same thing. Like, like he's mm-hmm. just as good for thinking of it only, which is only the inspiration part, right? He never did anything else with it. Execution is everything. everything. The other guy, you know, invested his money, got a prototype, hired an engineer to draw a CAD drawing, got a patent filed, you know, went to 17 sales meetings at Walmart while they made fun of his product, went to another one with a Target and finally got that. And now it's distributed in the store and, and he's finally getting a win. And after all that labor and that execution for years, my friend thinks he's the same as that guy. <laughs> exactly. Like, it, I've got, it drives there's me one crazy. Of those, there's one of those in my life right now. There's a, a Unger has just bought out a new product called Stingray. It's a triangular brush for internal window cleaning. And I can show you a video that I made in January 2014. It's now, what, November 2015 of me with my prototype of exactly the same brush, right, which I shared privately with my guys who have signed confidentiality agreements. And I said to them, this is what I'm thinking of doing. So now that it's all in the open, you know, I say, I put the video out there and then one guy, one guy wrote to me, said, so Perry, are you saying that you thought of it first? And I said, it's irrelevant who thought of it. Maybe a hundred people thought of it. The question is who mm-hmm. did it? Unger did it, right? Kudos Absolutely. to them. They got it off the ground. Do you there know what I mean? Go. 
you got to move. You got to move. You got to execute, man. And as a business owner, small, big, or medium, or everything in between, sometimes guys want to be the quarterback. They want all the glory. They want to do everything themselves. And you need to be more the coach. Yep. You need to be the guy that builds the team. You're the cheerleader for your team. You're leading the charge. You're putting the things in place, and you're getting it done. And I, I don't know. I just think the E and idea well, here is just Well, here glaring. are the questions that give you E. What, where, why, when, how. The answers to those questions tell you execution. What am I going to do? What's it going to look like? Where am I going to market it? Where is it? Uh, where am I going to make it? Why does it mean anything to anybody? You know what I mean? Like what, where, why, when, how? Those are, those are the execute questions. You write down as many what, where, why, when, how questions you can, and you start to start to get the execution, and then you do that execution. Yeah, but you can. Yes, absolutely. Execution can be. This, here's here's the, the 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 beauty of this idea is. You execution. You can be in execution and not executing. So you can design execution, but you're still in E, right? Because the, the actual final part is when it gets out into the marketplace. So, you, but you've got to know how you're going to execute if you're ever going to pull it off the ground, right? Right. So, so you've got to plan execution. You know, just sort of run out there and try and do something you haven't thought about. Then the mm-hmm, A, mm-hmm. the A is for associates. Associates is like, who can support me in this idea? Like, it might be for distribution, it might be for staffing, whatever it is. And, and I have another. It's your team. It's your team. That, you, exactly, you got it. Because the acronym that I have for 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 for, for A is called Fast, which is F A S T: Flow, Alignment, Synchronicity, and Team. Right. So, as um, you know, Chris Lambrinides, yeah, from WCR. Yeah, he's a pretty cool dude. <laughs> so, oh yeah, he's awesome. Did you see online that we're uh, promoting a, a webinar in a few weeks? Actually, that's coming out. Me and him about. I did the last couple of days. I've seen a couple of posts on it. Yeah, we just started. Yeah, that sounds really exciting. Huh? Oh, it's going to be epic. Yeah. So I've always said to Chris, like the whole relationship, he knows that I say synchronicity, alignment, and flow. Right. That this is another part of business. That what you're looking for in anything that you do is synchronicity, alignment, and flow. And if any one of them are missing, you have block. And if you have block, you have a problem. Remove the problem. Like it's so, so, so important to get rid of block. It, and it, block is usually a, per, a person, right? Yes. So the definition of flow is like the feeling of energized focus, full involvement and enjoyment that occurs when a person or a group is fully immersed in an activity. Mm-hmm. Like how's that? <laughs> Like that's what you're looking yeah. for in your business. Well, not you can block. feel it when you're in that. You can feel yeah. it when you're in that zone. When you're in the zone and you're just things are working and you're rocking and you're, it's it's going, you know, and you're gro- you're grooving. Now try this. This is the definition of team: a group of people forming one side of a competitive situation. I love that. Like when you I have it. Wait, to be honest, I got to wrap my head around that a second. Yeah. Say that again. It's for a me. group of people, like a team is a group of people, right? That makes sense. But mm-hmm. why are they a team? Because they're forming one side of a competitive situation. Now, what we, the, that, that means that you're in it together, heading in one direction, and there's other things that are, that are not going in that direction. It doesn't have to be another, another team of people, but you're a team. Like you're out there, like when Google started or Facebook started, they didn't have like anything coming at them from the other side, but they were heading in, in, well, they still had adversity. Oh, yeah, they I mean, had adversity and gen- maybe not a competitor, but they had technological mm. hurdles. They, they literally had to invent stuff that didn't exist just so their thing could work. Yes, yes. And it was competitive in the sense that there was, there was another search engine. I can't even remember it now. My goodness. But there was one before Google. <laughs> you know, you see these businesses get stuck at 50000 a year, and you see other ones go up to 300000 and 500,000 and a million dollars a year, even in the service industry. And some of them are even huger, you know, become franchises and things like that. You know what I mean? And the, and the difference yeah. is flow. Like if you want to say what's missing, it's flow. You've either got a block. If you've got a block, you're going to stay the same. If you've got flow, you'll grow. And it's in its nature for the human experience. You know, it's nature for water to flow. It's nature for people to grow. Yeah. And even it can be a mental thing, right? I mean, I talk to a lot of people, Perry, and uh, I talked to a guy today from Texas. And it's like, sometimes people can't really believe in their heart 
that making more than 100000 a year is possible cleaning something that's dirty. It's like for whatever reason, their background, their childhood, yep. they have this presupposition that's hard-coded inside their brain. What their value is. Where they, absolutely. And getting them to understand that that's completely fake. It doesn't even exist. It's, it's a figment of their imagination. And I'm not min- minimizing it because I know what that feels like in my own life. Mm-hmm. It's very, very powerful. It's a powerful emotion. How do, how do you even flow once you've hit that ceiling you know so many of the guys i talk to they don't even do 100 grand a year and then i got other people i interview that are i mean you have a multi-million dollar business chris lambernini's had a three million dollar but what's what the heck how do how do they bridge that gap how do they overcome that i wonder i wonder if it is like you know i always see myself as the caretaker of my business you know i had a mentor once who said to me it's you know it's like your little sister you got to kind of you know you know you know people are going to interact with with her you know but you've got to try and work out who's good for her and who's bad for her, you know? Mm. So, um, so I always look at my business where, you know, I'm it's managing director or it's CEO. Like my job is to, is to make it and protect it and drive it. So, you know, what I draw out of the business is not, doesn't drive me. It's what the business does. And the business's job is to serve other people. Yeah. So Zig Ziglar would say, you can have anything you want if you help enough other people get what they want. Yeah. yeah, that's good. That's a classic. So you can grow a business. You can you can draw your 50 grand a year. And and there are some extraordinary multi-billion, like the guy who, who owns Ikea is the fifth wealthiest man in the world, and he still flies economy and drives, drives a Volvo. You know, you don't have to draw big bucks because because that means that you've made it. You know, but what you want to do is make sure that the business that you build makes it. That's a really, really, really profound thing. I hope people wrap their head around that. I used to tell people on my onboarding process when I'd hire someone, I would like welcome them into the family and I'd give them this whole spiel, every single new employee, about how you're part of the family now. And when you're part of the family, you know we, we look out for you and we have your back and it's more than just you working for us. We care about you as a human. I want to know your spouse's name. I want to know what, you, what drives you in life. And I have this whole like emotional meeting, but part of my conversation, to tie back to your point about the little sisters, I said, on the flip side of that, this business is my child. Yes. And I will protect my child. <laughs> and I, the number one thing I protect my child from is negativity. Negativity in a business is cancer. And I cut out cancer and remove it. Like immediately, if I see there's a tumor, you'll be removed. And, and like the look on the people's face was so intense. <laughs> but it was like this. But I was dead serious. I mean, I, I, I will not allow cancer to invade my legacy for my family. Yep. And it's not about money or the flying nope. business class. It's not about any of that. Nope. It's about winning. It's about self-worth. It's about competing, pushing yourself. And it's about your kids and your family and my date night with my wife. That's what I care about. Well, here's a whole new topic, but there's a lot of uh, – we're in a male-dominated industry, so I'll talk about men. Um, but there's – if you study manhood, like we're really, um, we're really lacking any understanding of, of manhood, what a man is, what he's designed to do, how his brain works, what his archetypal sort of positions are, you know. So there's, a, mm-hmm. there's an awesome yeah. book called King, Warrior, Magician, Lover, which are the four archety- archetypes of manhood. And that's a really um, very good defining book. But outside the philosophies that are in that one is that man is a problem solver. So if we don't have a problem, we make one. So if you want to be a good businessman, right, go, go you know, push yourself so that you've got problems. When you have problems, you solve the problems. When you solve the problems, you have success. When you have success, you feel better then go looking for the next thing to solve. But if you just settle, settle back and you just go into block and you watch TV, which I'm very anti-television, by the way, um, yeah. then if you, if you do that kind of thing, you get socially engineered to be ordinary and to retire, right? And then, um, That's so good. <laughs> and then, so good. And then you don't solve any problems, so then you feel less as a man and then you're no longer got testosterone and you no longer oh. meet anybody's needs because you're a soft... Um, you know, easy, you know. Oh, well, you, you know that I'm a, I have a Christian worldview, okay? This isn't yes. like a Christian podcast, but I'm a Christian. And one of the, and, and I love studying biblical masculinity and all that, but all, just, just to throw this out there, you know, in the book of Genesis, God tells Adam, he says, he says, you see the earth, go subdue it. Right. 
and and this, that's a word we don't use anymore. And it's a super legendary, like Braveheart, Spar. This is Sparta, like ridiculously epic word. Like we are made to to club stuff and drag it home. Like we're made to conquer stuff, build stuff, create stuff, protect stuff. We're made to fight. We're made to get dirty. And that's really what business is. You're so correct. Yes. <laughs> I'm so pumped up right now. I'm yelling. I'm like yelling and my family can probably hear me because I work from home. But anyway, so I, I want to keep rolling here because we could just do this all day. But We never got you, to S for st- share. Oh, oh, yes. Okay. I'll edit the part out that says no, 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 I want to keep rolling No, we here. can keep rolling. It's fine. <laughs> so the, the last one is um, S for share. I, I-D-E-A-S. Share is, is when you put it in the world. The definition of when something is share is when you can no longer edit it. So it's not when you tell your friends, you know, you're going to do this, right? Because you can still edit it. And that's the, that's the defining point about share is that when you put it out in the world. So there's a famous, famous video from Steve Jobs when he, when he said, um, you know, when he brought out the Macintosh, you know, we're going to share it and it's no longer ours. It belongs to the world. Right now, he could edit it's it. It's a very he intimate later, thing. He too. later edited it. The, the Macintosh becomes, you know, the, the iMac now. But so it's not about whether you can edit it or not. It's that you can no longer edit that edition. In other words, and he has another one like entrepreneurship, service people deliver service. You know, get out there and knock on doors, find customers. That's what you do. That's what your business is. Do it. You know what I mean? Like, right. like, and then and make your print your flyer and share it. You can't edit it. If you want to make another flyer for the next season or the next service or whatever it is, you can make a new flyer. But the, but the point at which you share an idea for marketing or you share an idea for a product, that's when you actually put it out there into the public where the public give you the feedback whether it's a good idea or a bad idea, you know, from their perspective. Yes. You know? It's a very personal thing. And that's it's very the definition scary. Of like, risk. Oh. That's the definition of risk Absolutely. when you're prepared to put everything that you have, innovate, design, execute, you know, plan execution and then, you know, be prepared to deliver execution, find the people around you who are going to help you do it. And then the time where you need what it takes, the kahunas, right, is when you go to share because that's the day where you face judgment. And that's what people are scared of. More scared of failure than they are of success. How crazy is that? Yes. It's true, though. I mean, I have a software company that, you know, we've taken a beating on some of the parts of that in the early days. I've been working on it for three years, and we've pivoted, and we've, we, we're really doing well now. But it's been a crazy journey, and it's a very hard thing to create something, release it to the market, and then have it be criticized. Oh, get beaten and, but up. It, it has to happen. <laughs> it has. It's a natural thing, but it's still painful. Yeah. But that negative feedback, there's a, there's a thread on Facebook today. Where somebody's going, why is it that some manufacturers, like if anybody says anything is wrong with their product, they take it like and attack that person, you know, whereas there are other ones like I know what, what we are is that we thrive on feedback. We thrive on people coming up with ideas, whether it's critical or inspirational for us. You know what I mean? Because yeah. we're not afraid of of modifying our product. We're not, af- we're not afraid that we didn't get it perfect the first time. It was perfect in our minds, but we didn't think everything that could be thought it's like apple maps i'll tell you my theory on apple maps i wouldn't be surprised if tim cook's letter was already written you know his letter of apology i i don't i don't i'm not familiar you don't know that story no. okay so apple maps tim apple put out apple maps and had all these problems in it all these little addresses all over the place that you couldn't possibly have found but they the apple maps didn't guide people to these addresses so tim cook wrote a letter of apology but I wouldn't be – like at some point you imagine he's got like 400 people or 500 people trying to check every single address in the whole world. And at some point they must have said, this is ridiculous. Why don't we just put it out there and let a billion people test it? Then in three months, <laughs> in three months we'll know everything that's wrong with it. And here's the letter of apology because it's not quite fair. It's not quite what they expected from us, Apple. But it's the only way to get it perfect. Wow, that's a really good insight, and that I don't know totally if it's true applies. Or not, by so the way. it's just my—that's how I work, you know. Like, so it kind of rings true to me. <laughs> well, it makes sense to me, yeah. and it, it can make sense to a small cleaning guy. You could have a little sure. carpet cleaner in Podunkville, Tennessee, and he's scared to, 
I don't know, put together a training program for his new employee so he can scale a little bit yep. because it's not going to be perfect and he's totally hesitating. He should have had it done last year, but then he pushed it off to this year and now, you know, we just constantly delay, but it's not about perfection, is it, Perry? No. It's about progress. No. It's about putting it out there. But it could be a tile cleaner, it, it could be a mattress cleaner, or it could be approaching a commercial customer when he's only ever done res- residential. You know, I mean, there's a there's yep. hundred things that he's scared of. Here's one for you. Yeah. Have you ever done this? Have, have you ever talked to yourself, looking at yourself in the eye in the mirror? I don't say, I can't say that I have. Okay, try that. I do it every time I'm in conflict. I, really? Because I reckon I'm a really good counselor and coach of other people, right? <laughs> but, but I'm no good, necessarily so good, you know, with myself. You know, like if I'm just thinking inside myself and I never see myself from outside. So every time yeah. I'm in conflict, I go to the mirror and say, Perry. Right? And I talk to myself. I'll look myself straight in the eye, by the way. But <laughs> I love so you it. look yourself in the eye. But what um, the reason why it's really top of mind for me is I've just watched the, the series, the, uh, the season one of True Detective. Have you seen that? Mm-hmm. I've heard of it. Okay. It's worth watching because there's one guy, and what he has, he has like a, um, a mirror on his wall the size of a quarter, like a circular mirror. And he, in this, in this, in this, uh, I've just finished watching it today and uh, this morning because I couldn't sleep. So, um, but he looks at himself directly in the eye with a mirror that can only show him his eye and talks to himself. Wow. And I really, really think that if you, if you can't quite get out of the vortex, when you, you know, when you get in a spin and you, you know, you need to do something, but you can't do it. So you're getting caught by fear. (sighs) Just call it block. Yeah. Yeah. Then talk yep. to yourself because if it was your friend, you'd be able to say, "Come on, man, do it!" Like, what's up? Why? What are you scared of? Yeah. Yeah. That's a good. That's so that's a conversation you need to have with yourself. But you can't have that conversation with yourself if you can't see yourself. I promise you. Yeah. That's that's really good. Mm. I'm gonna have to try that because you know sometimes what I what I do when I have conflict is is sort of similar in, in a way. I take a blank piece of paper and I draw a line down the middle of it, and then on one half uh-huh. I write down. All the, you know, the one side of the, of the argument or the conflict, right. you know, if I don't do, if, of the decision. And on the other side, so it's kind of like a pros and cons. I write down all the pros, you know, if I make this choice, then this is the good stuff that comes and, yep. and this is the bad stuff. And sometimes just seeing it, you're like, seriously, how, how did I even have any block with this at all? It's so clear what I should be doing right now. It exactly. Can give you, you give it quite form. clear. Yeah, that's another way of doing it. And that's what they, they call it, the Benjamin Franklin for good reason, they tell me. Yeah, that's exactly what I call it. We must have read the same yeah, book because I can't remember where I read it, <laughs> so, but that's what uh, I it's call been it. Passed too. down, I think. From uh, one would think that Benjamin Franklin actually did it. <laughs> that makes sense. He probably did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I read his biography <laughs> back in the day. Are you looking for a simple way to get more sales, more referrals, and strengthen your customer loyalty? Look no further than SendJim.com. It was handcrafted for you as a powerful tool that will automate your follow-ups after the sale. Imagine being able to stay in contact with your customers all year long by pushing a single button on your smartphone. This is a space age warp speed technology and it will eliminate the chaos inside your business caused by trying to properly follow up with all of your leads and customers. Sign up for a free trial with no credit card required at sendgym.com right now. What are you waiting for? Perry, you know, the uh, the webinar that I have coming out in a couple, three weeks or so with Chris Lambertini's, who I know you've known for a long time. and Yep, yep. Um, Good friend of mine. We spent a lot of time making this thing, man. And, and the focus of it is, you know, how to automate, grow, and then set your business up so that it could be sold at some point. I mean, not that you have to sell it, but to build it in such a way that you create an actual asset. And, and sure. there's going to be sure. a ton of window sure. cleaners, you know, on that. Uh, webinar. And as we're going through this interview here, talking about ideas, you know, I don't want to put you on the spot with that, but we should do some sort of a webinar just on that because people have so many blocks. They can't get clarity. They don't know what the next step is. Maybe, you know, me and you could collaborate on on one maybe later this winter or something if you have time. I would love to do that. Ideas, ideas will give you a language. Like, like when we gave that presentation a couple of years ago at the PWRE convention, I had a, a like a, a couple came up to me and said, you've just like explained so much about our last 20 years of doing business together as a couple, like as a husband and wife business. And she said to me, like, um, you know, 
it's kind of like you've saved our marriage, not that we're getting divorced. You know what I mean? But, but she said, what, what I've just realized, he's the ideas man and I'm the execute, you know, like I do all the doing. So what happens is that he comes up with an idea. He's all in, inspired and he's got an innovation and we could do this and we could do that. And then he goes into design, like, cause she could like, it's such an easy model. He's thinking, you know, how do I bring it into existence? And she's just going, ah, that won't work. What about this? And whatever, and this couldn't do. And and you know, you can't do that. And what what happens if this happens, right? So she's in execute as he's in inspiration, as he's in design, just shooting him down is what it feels like. But she never knew because that's her function is execute. But she never knew it had a title, you know. And without that title, without that label, she can't identify her behavior. She's just being her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they're yep. just being team the way they be team. He comes up with all these crazy ideas and she shoots them down instead of I'm an execute. And he can say, you know, can you not wear your execute hat right now and join me in inspiration and innovation and design? And then we can do execute together because right. we'll have a better, a better solution. Well, he just feels like his ideas are attacked and she just feels like he lives in fantasy land and never wants <laughs> to gotta, discuss the, the, you know, the real world, quote unquote. I totally get that. That makes a lot of sense. And then you've got block and the block is simply that people didn't, didn't understand. So, so the answer to your question about what if had polls comes down to one word and that's education. You cannot have enough education. A guy said to me when I was in my early 20s, he said, I'm going to give you a tip. He could see that I was a risk taker, right? And he said, I'm going to encourage you to spend every spare dollar you have on your brain. You know why? Because one day if you ever go broke, they can take your house, they can take your bank account, they can take your business, but they can never take what's in your brain. And they can never take your kids away was the other part of it. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes when you have fear, you just ask yourself, what is the worst that can happen? And it's usually not that bad. If you look at square in the eye and say, well, I could go broke or I could you know, lose my house or something, but I still have me. I still have my family. <laughs> it's, you're like, you know what I mean? If you can face that, sometimes that's enough to get you to say, you know what, let's, let's get this done. Let's move forward on this. But those of us who have been through it say that most people who have been through that stuff, as long as they've come out the other, the other end, would say that those were the worst times of my life as far as what it felt like, but the best thing that could ever have happened to me. Yep. Because, you know, to have money and not have money is really, really critical to understand money. But if you've never not had money, then you don't, then you're, you're deluded that somehow it's important, you know, and essential and you can't survive without it, but you do. And then you go and get money again. Yeah. You know, it, money's it, flowing all the time. It's moving every, every like like the wind, you know? So you just got to put your hand out and grab a bit or just breathe in, you know? It's there. Yeah. Well, I had the, a guy I just interviewed last week said there's like $14 trillion in the in circulation. If you're broke, it's your own fault. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You just exactly. got to go get, go get a classic. something. <laughs> <laughs> just go get some, yeah? Yeah, you just go get it, you know? Go get it. So Exactly. Well, Perry, I mean, <laughs> you, you brought out like seven new products this year. I didn't even realize you were selling stuff to the military and all this other – you're, you're doing all this stuff, but I, I get hung up on this ideas thing, which is its own product. At least it should be. What are you doing over there? I mean, how, how does this all tie together? Well, I think that the, what, I mean, what we do is like we put ideas into action. And I think that, uh, that, that this year we, we really changed everything about the tool, you know, which is called the Waterfed pole and the, the Waterfed brush, you know, which is the thing which actually cleans the glass. I mean, a pole doesn't clean glass, only a brush does. So we've like innovated the constructor brush and the reach it and plus systems and tube runner and all these things. And, and the, the credit goes back to that. We have a system on how to think, you know what I mean? Right. So, so, so we're walking our talk and I think that was, that's really critical that, you know, that ideas is not a, not, not a book that I read ideas is something that, that, that um, it came from a, a little, uh, a little spark from um, Kurt Kempton, you know, Kurt. Yeah, absolutely. Good. Friend. Right. So Kurt said, he just said to me, idea execute. Right. And I go, wow, that's so, that's so meaningful. Right. Idea execute, idea execute, idea execute like that. And it sort of came that ultimately the acronym of, you know, the idea and the execute were, were the letter I and the letter E. And then I started to understand, you know, like, and it comes to you like this kind of thing. So I think with reach it and constructor brush, you know, we're really, like pushing the line of the 80-20 rule 
efficiency and then you know allowing an innovation an idea allowing a mental spark to happen and then being able we've, we've got a machine or a mechanism in our business where we're able to manifest it like rapidly as as we become uh, get a conviction i suppose is a better way to say it you know become more certain more determined but we don't wait like two years to be determined we we're either immediately convinced you know and then we start putting all the all the machinery into place to make it happen wow. so it's kind of like I, I feel we're walking the talk and i feel that's why ideas can be a product you know because we're 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 an example of it and people can look to us a little bit and say well you know these are simple things but he's doing it yeah it, that's that's what it's all about and people are hungry for content like i have an information product business myself i sell uh, a course called window wealth i have an online small business boot camp and yep. people need content now the one thing that bothers me about selling my content is that a large portion of the people don't execute on it but i think with the ideas thing that you're talking about which you're using in your business to deploy your own future line of products which is absolutely brilliant that idea is that could be kind of like the missing link because i think they don't know how to execute on it it's like they don't know like I, I give them all this information here's what i did how you know we did 150,000 a month in revenue and here's what we did and you can do it too and i'm not a genius and they and they consume the information they understand the information but then they sit on it i think yeah. ideas helps them understand why they're sitting on it then they exactly. identify the block and then they yep. remove the block and they can get get some flow and the going people on. they need to be involved to make it happen you know yeah, right. It's just it. it gives so much clarity, and yep. that is the number one thing. Some people don't even want to listen to podcasts like this because it stresses them out to even think <laughs> about the idea of systemizing their business because they're like, yes. "I can't even deal with this right now." Like, I got angry customers, and so they get stuck in that ro role being a that's firefighter. That's yeah, they're right just there. they just no put out, they answer, alignment and flow. Right. Exactly. Nothing there. They just put out fires all day. They just. Yep. They just move from task to task with no long-term vision at all. Um, that's really good, Perry. I, I appreciate it so much. You have such a crazy story um, coming to China with your with your your son with like ten grand and just starting a million dollar. Like that's insane. Like that's awesome. That's that's really cool that you're doing that. And thank you. I think it's for you. It's just normal. That's who you are. Yeah, but it's, <laughs> you know it's it not is. a typical thing. <laughs> just so yeah. you know. Um, but we're, I mean, we're thrilled. Like I'm thrilled, you know, because you know, my boy has gotten no formal education, no certificate from any government department. And I said to him, well, this is all I can do is I can give you an education. You know, if you give a man a fish, he eats for a day. If you teach a man a fish, he can eat for his life. So I said, let me show you. And I've had businesses that fail. Like those, you know, like, you know, the, the, the long history of us, we've had, you know, amazing successes and amazing failures. And, um, you know, but to have this one and be able to touch it with him and give him enormous amount of responsibility. We've never put anybody over him. He's run all the websites and the videos and everything. And it's a real father to son, you know, gift, you know, to say, you know, and then and then for whether it's God or the universe or whatever, but for it to work and be so amazing and so vibrant and so exciting, you know, that's his he's 23 now. But this is his, uh, you know, you think what he's learned, what he's seen. He's lived in China. He's you know, started from an idea. He was there when I had my, my mock-up of the Reach at Mini, you know. We yeah. didn't have a website. We didn't, you know, we didn't have a customer, you know. so Yeah, you uh, don't know this about me, but I my seven-year-old started a candy machine business. I gave him a $500 <laughs> loan, and he bought five candy machines, and I made him walk in door-to-door -to, -door to commercial businesses in our town and read a script that he memorized, and he got his machines located. Long story short, he worked it for six months. He made profit. Every Monday, he wore a work shirt, a work hat, and it was a grind for him. Like He would get stressed right. out. He didn't want to do it. He didn't want to do it, but then there came the day before we moved to Costa Rica, Perry. We sold that company, quote unquote, the company, the five candy machines, to some other kids, and they paid my son $1,200 for his business. Uh -huh, that's totally and, awesome. Like, you should have seen the light bulb that went off in his head. It's not about money. It's about... He took an idea that we talked about. Yeah. We executed on it. He yep. worked it and then he sold a business. The, it, it, you can never take that away from him. Like the the confidence, the inspiration. Like now he's just an idea factory with all these yeah. these ideas. And that's what you're doing with your son too. Any parent out there listening to this is absolutely yeah. going to relate. What a gift. And watch out watch out for the idea factory because the idea factory is good but only that's why you need a mentor. That's why the son needs the father, right? 
is that my boy can come up with a million ideas, but he doesn't know which ones to execute or how to, you know, I mean, increasingly he does now because he's 23, but, you know, a lot of the ideas, the Reach It logo was his, the, all of our logos are his. A lot of the product names that we have are his, but he doesn't know which one is the great one or which one to execute on because that's what the old man has that experience. Yeah? Yeah, absolutely. So the, they need that the guidance. That he will be an idea factory. You know, your boy will be an idea factory for the next 15 years, but he needs somebody to say how to execute like you did with him with his first business. Go in there, use the script, and make it work. And then you get the ripple effect. I really, I'm passionate about this as a topic, but um, yeah, the ripple effect. Because when I talked earlier about manhood, like you've sown the first seed of manhood, right? So all the indigenous cultures in the world have a um, an initiation into manhood, but we don't. So we don't know when we're a boy and when we're a man. And most of us are grown up boys. Yeah, yeah. We, it's, we have increasingly, no... increasingly so, especially now with technology, people not, you know, getting serious about their life till their 30s or 40s. And things are getting weird out there in Western culture a little bit with men. Yeah. And what happens is the girl has like her first period is a moment where her mom will say, well, things are a bit different now and you're a woman. Right. And things mm -hmm. are going to be different. And that that one small major event because i know that you know the friends that a girl has when she goes through that change in life are usually her friends for life so it's major to her and it's influential and it's it's um it's life-changing the boy doesn't have that i mean the mm. jewish religion has the bar mitzvah you know so there are there are and and all of the indigenous people the oldest like if you watch the movie 300 you see the the, mm -hmm. the the elders take the boy away from the mom and you know he has to be with the elders and with the men now and you'll see that in most of the indigenous cultures, but you don't see men making men of their sons. You know, there's no ripple effect moment. So for my son, what I did is he was like 17 and I offered him to pay half of him jumping out of an airplane at 12,000 feet and <laughs> to go tandem paragliding, wow. which he accepted, <laughs> which he accepted and, you know, really, really was horrified. Like everybody else got to the ground. There were five skydiving couples, you know, everybody else is woo, woo, woo. You know, like this where they get the ground and my boy's just sitting there shaking, you know, <laughs> right? <laughs> but the ripple effect, two weeks later, that was in New Zealand. Two weeks later, I said to him, or no, 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 one week later, because we were still in New Zealand. And I said to him, look, we're heading home. How about this? If I give you $50 a day and you backpack around New Zealand, do whatever you want. I'm not going to talk to you. You can't ring me. I'm not going to ring you. And, uh, and then uh, catch your flight, you know, back to Sydney where we lived. Right, and he accepted that because he said, "Well, if I could jump out of a plane, I can do that." Yeah, that's a great story, and it's a huge gift to be able to share your business with your son like that, Perry. It really is. I think so. <laughs> well, Perry, you know, obviously you believe in educating yourself. You mentioned that you went through all the Ziggler stuff, which is like world class, and all these other sales trainings. Your son, I mean, do you ever do you, do you send him to stuff like that? I mean, I for me, business education, not formal education, but business, real world, manly, epic education is so critical. Uh, yeah. How important is that to you guys inside? I believe company? I believe anything which if you pay for any accelerated education, anything which is non government, not that I bag out government education, but it's but it's 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 rote. You know what I mean? So if yep. somebody's going to run a program like uh, like Harrison's just been to Singapore for uh, Landmark Forum, which is a real life changing, um, um, enabling program. It's only three days, but they're three hell of a days. And uh, so, and then he listens to podcasts all the time. He listens to Tim Ferriss, Joe Rogan. Um, he's always coming to me every day. He's telling me, you know, what he's listened to a podcast. And so he's like, he's he's a consumer at and his early twenties, but you know, what he's picking up is the wisdom of the ages, you know, being crystallized by guys who are, who are just chatting, you know what I mean? Right. Well, we have access with technology now. Like, like I mentioned earlier with our webinar, we can bring together huge masses of people and education flows so quickly and easily. And it's, you, there's so much free information. Sometimes it's just overload, but guys listening to this, you got to educate yourself. You have to yeah. learn. You don't have to reinvent the wheel with, with the systems of your business. You just have to know what to do. And, and that's it's, really, it's so much, isn't it easy just to be able to tap into what other people have done and then get that, get the, get that as your seed. Yeah. Well, that, that's what I did. That's yeah. what I did. I didn't blaze some new trail or something. And, and, and Chris didn't either. What happens is you kind of find your way by eventually falling into line with the way that things work for people that have been there before. And with our with our webinar, 
that's the point of it is trying to help people understand where to start what to do it's not about the money it's not about ego it's about having time to pick your kids up from the bus being able to go on date night with your wife that's what business automation is to me it's not about the systems are boring right but what it produces is peace and stability and growth inside your company and I, I'm I just come alive when I talk about that. You probably can't tell, but that's the whole point of this podcast is to help yeah. push people in that direction. So I'm pumped about it. So you've got the webinar. What's it called? Uh, it's called the Epic Webinar. It's actually three webinars spread apart uh, one week each. So there's one and there's part two, part three, and it's it's automate, grow, sell. How to automate, grow, and eventually sell your company or you know, awesome. build a company that could be sold. And target market, like who are you aiming at? I know like window cleaners would be one, but who else? Yeah, I mean, it's for any service business, um, but we're heavily, you know, marketing the webinar to window cleaners just because I know that space, I am in that business. Yeah. That's kind yeah, of yeah, where yeah, I yeah, made yeah. my initial mark. But it wouldn't make any difference like to any other business, right? Like any no. service-based business, the rules will be the same. The, exactly. It's just, uh, oh, there goes another saying, like I am not my product. Like I am not yep. a window or a window cleaning. Like, you know what I mean? I am exactly. Me. So, so the same logic, same wisdom, the same. It's the same um, framework. I call it the yeah, architecture. Everything. Yeah, yeah, the architecture. I call it the, yeah, it's, it's right. identical. You can have a pest control business. You can have whatever. But the bottom line is, is there's certain core things that need to be in place. And we're hoping to have hundreds of people on this thing. Barry, well, I saw, because, I saw you guys put out like a couple of um, like little posts, you know, maybe only two days ago is the first time I saw it. Like, how are you going to get the word out? Like, like what's your, what's yeah. your execute how you well yeah <laughs> well our execute i do have a promotional map i use trello trello.com great little free tool for organizing your thoughts but uh we're gonna use facebook ads facebook posts we're gonna put some stuff on the forums and we're gonna just ask people to share it. i mean i just put a couple posts on my personal facebook just to kind of prime the pump and we got about 150 people registered already in just about three days uh, our goal is you know, I, I think we'll probably have somewhere around 700 people is what I'm, I'm hoping. Uh, it just depends. But the, the key to it sounds like, you know, that the first round of people that if they share, is it like if they share it with somebody else, that would definitely be ideal. Yes. Even they get a buddy, <laughs> they get a buddy to even they come over and have, have a beer and get a buddy to, to watch it together. So you've got some sort of, you know, commitment, you know, that you, you're actually not going to zone out on the night that it's on or the day that it's on. And find something else more important than your education to do, you know? Right, which is so. easy to do, and I've, I've been guilty of that. But, yeah, I mean, hopefully we're hoping we're asking people to share it and, you know, because business owners are typically friends with other business owners, and, you know, that that's what we're hoping happens here with this thing. Well, what if what if what if we did something like this? What if what if we put something up like a like a whoever shares it the most, like gets a prize or something like that? Would that work? Yeah, I mean, you mean like with, with – uh... With your well, like, like a with product, reach it? like like let's say let's say I put up, um, I don't know, like something like a reach it mini or something like that, and you go because what you need is just like you need it to go viral, right? Because it's worthwhile. Everybody's going to win. There are no losers by go, by watching a webinar. Yeah, right. Absolutely. The, it, I totally believe in that. That would be awesome. I mean, <laughs> I don't want to put you on the spot because you're getting if that's. What do you, no, what are you I think uh, I think I think it would make sense because sometimes you know people are, like we're all too busy you know we're all completely overloaded so like if there's an inspiration say well if I do this I could win that like you know like it's just that little bit of spark that makes somebody share it you know yeah. makes somebody do it then Absolutely. um then I'd, I'd I'd be thrilled to do that so well those those polls are like I'm on your website right here they're like 700 bucks right <laughs> that's yeah yeah that's not a cheap thing are you you're totally sure about this I can edit this out it. if you don't want to do it. I can it. do it because I believe in it. Like, I mean, that's how I became who I am, right, is by doing stuff like this. So, um, in fact, an old guy once helped me out. I mean, this is an old, this is an old story, but I've had it happen twice in my life to me, and, uh, and, and I also use it now. And he, he helped me out, and I said, how do I repay you? He was like a millionaire, you know, and I, he said, you can never repay me, right? <laughs> like, I have everything that I want. And he said, but I'll tell you what you can do is make sure you pass it on to the next guy when it's your turn. Like when you're my age, you do it, you know, so it's cascading, like, you know, knowledge and, and, uh, you know, helping other people and inspiring other people is, should be cascading from one generation to the other. And that's what makes, you know, great countries, great, great communities, great families and all that sort of stuff. So well, I feel like I'm, I'd be super, super pleased, but I mean, you said you're looking for about maybe 700, 500, 700 people. Yeah. Is I that mean, what I, you're thinking? I, that's what I'm thinking. It's hard to know for sure, but you know, we're in, 
heavily going towards window cleaners, although we'll have carpet and pest control and stuff on there too. Pressure cleaning companies, a lot of those. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, that's what, that's our goal is around there. We could have more, you know, it just, especially with you, with this, I, I really appreciate this. This, this could really help. Um, yeah, no problem. No problem. Let, let me, let me raise the bar. Oh, let me raise the bar because I'm doing my math. I will guarantee that the person who shares it the most, you've got a way of measuring share. Have you? Um, yeah, yeah. I could put something together for that. Sure. Okay. So that's the first thing you have to know. We have to know that they, they know if they share us, they get the link, right? And right. then the person that shares it the most, and then I'll put up a reach at mini for the person who shares it the most. And then for everybody over 700, like a mini is 790, I think. So, but everybody, every person that is shared over, over 700, I'll put up a dollar, a dollar of reach at products. So if there's a thousand people attend the webinar, I'll put up a thousand dollars worth of reach it. If it's 1500 people, I'll put up $1,500 worth of reach it. Wow. To the person who shares the most. How okay. would that be? I'm, I'm taking notes here. I'm super, with a limit, <laughs> I'm really with a limit, pumped right now. With a limit at 1500. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Things could get crazy, right? <laughs> we'll switch it up to a reach it pro. Right. If, if you okay. get that, if you get that big. Yeah. So just to be clear here, cause I'm taking, I'm scribbling Perry. This is awesome. <laughs> People are going to freak out for this. Um, cause a lot of these guys, they just don't have the money going into the winter. They're freaked out. This will be a major thing for somebody to yeah. win this. So in, in the Epic webinar series is totally free and just and you're running by regist- it in winter, right? So it's their yeah, downtime. You're not it's running dis- it in peak season. Exactly. It's December so no 3rd. There's no excuse for them not to do it. They could pull a buddy over and get a buddy to commit with them to watch it together at their home so that, so that so that they're they're bound, you know what I mean? That the right. the, the kid with a snotty nose doesn't take them away from it. Yeah, I'll <laughs> talk to some of my my nerdy tech friends, and we'll put together a shareable link. So you're saying, uh, basically, eight hundred dollar free water for a poll for the person that gets the most shares, you know, of other people that register for the free webinar. Basically, yeah. I just got to make sure one I, we, deep, we one track deep. that. We'll, yeah, I'll make sure that's tracked. And then if we get a thousand people, then they win even more stuff. They win a thousand dollars. Thousand bucks stuff. worth of reach it. And if you get to fifteen hundred, I'm going to cap it at fifteen hundred because fifteen hundred is a major success for you. I'll bet you know, like for the webinar. Oh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. It's going to be awesome. And then that's, they can switch it up to a reach it pro if they want to at that point because that's how much a reach it pro is pretty close to that. Okay. They could pay well, a little bit extra. Perry, I don't know how to say thanks enough for that. That's unexpected and much appreciated. You, you and you're known for this. Like everybody I talk to about you, like, oh Perry, man, he's so genuine, he's so great, and and I do know you. We've talked for a couple of years sporadically, mm. but mm, mm, mm. Th- this is this is really good. No, we. I mean, it's the same old thing. People people help us where we need to be helped and uh, we help people where they need to be helped. But the good things need to be, need to be pushed as good. Yeah. Yeah, so absolutely. We're in it and together, man. I appreciate it. Perry. How, how can people reach out to you? If, if, cause there are a lot of window cleaners listening to this pressure cleaning companies too, if they need to get you know information about the stuff that you have for sale. Cutting edge, water fed window cleaning equipment. <laughs> right. Exactly. And, <laughs> yeah. and that is what it is. Yeah, no, they just go to futurecleaning.com and there's a there's a there's a welcome mat that sort of drops down. If you just wait like two or three seconds, there's a welcome mat that drops down, and then there's a downloadable link to uh, to to our catalog and price list, and then all of our products are available through WCR, of course. You know, like our friend Chris. Right, right, right. He, and let's let's make that clear too, because Chris is my co-host in the webinar. He has an online store, shopwindowcleaningresource.com. Sure. All of Perry's stuff is in that store, and that you know yes. that's where you got to get it is from from uh, someone that sells it. So go to Shop Window Cleaning Resource for the polls. If you want to get a product manual, go to futureofcleaning.com. Wait three seconds, and your screen will change, and you'll get a pop up, a drop down that lets you put your email in. I'm on there right now. Yes, I and see it, it is an awesome catalog. We even have a print version. It's concertina. It's like uh, 24 pages. Concertina's out, right? So it's okay. about, I don't know, six feet wide. Oh, really? Um, <laughs> That's yeah, cool. It's hilarious. And it's That's amazing. Awesome. And it's it's pure quality. But but the essence, you can see, this is all Harrison's work, by the way. Yeah, my boy. Mm-hmm. So this is his first catalog. So you have a look at it and you go, yeah, that's... Uh... Um, somebody wrote to me yesterday from where, maybe Canada or Australia or something, and said, uh, I sent him a link to the catalog and he says, look, he said, we got everybody else's product. But he said, I am impressed to say the least. And I thought for somebody to write to say the least when they saw the catalog, right? The oh, absolutely. You know there's a ton more people that were just as impressed but didn't take the time to actually write you about yeah. it. 
yeah, and but impressed is one thing, but to say the least, right? It means like, how do I say how impressed I am, except to say that that's, that's right. not enough, you know? So anyway, so yeah, go to futurecleaning.com and uh, and and have a look at the catalog, and you'll get a real insight into you know how we've sort of manifest our ideas and turn them into reality. Well, I look forward to working with you maybe on this ideas project. I'll get with you on coordinating this the delivery of this poll. That's so generous. Thank you so much. People are going to be pumped about that. It's going to help us get the webinar word out for our webinar. You know, Perry, this podcast wasn't even supposed to come out until January. No one knows that it exists, but I'm going to have to release this early just <laughs> to get the buzz going here. So I appreciate your time, Perry. Uh, are you planning on speaking anymore? Maybe other conventions? You do such a great job at that. Maybe can we see you next year at the convention? I've, I mean, Thad's asked me if I'm going to be there, and I've said I'm going to be there. So it's um, okay. he's the guy who sets the the thing. But we would like to get involved, you know, in in more conventions before awesome. um, while I've got, while I've got time and energy and passion. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, everybody, thank you, Perry Tate. Go to futurecleaning.com to get the manual. Go to shop window cleaning resource to buy a poll if you guys need one or want to invest in that. And I just want to recap the last thing. Inspiration, design, execute, associates, and share. And there's go back and listen to this whole interview again because there's a lot of life-changing stuff packed into those uh, five points in the acronym ideas. Thank you so much, Perry. Take care. You're welcome. You're welcome. And to you, sir. Hey, thanks for hanging out, friends. And from all of us here at the Quick Talk Podcast team, we hope you love today's show. We hope that you were inspired to become a doer and not just a listener. Apply what you've heard today in your own business and watch things change for the better. Lastly, remember that all the money in the world can't save your soul. Seek first the kingdom of God, my friends. We'll see you next time. For more information about the Quick Talk Podcast or Joshua's other businesses, visit our website, quicktalkpodcast.com. Have a blessed day.